everyone. Thank you for joining me in today's webinar on the microscopic basics to building good flock. My name is Natalie Walton and I'm a microscopist here at Aquafix. I use microscopy to help wastewater plants determine the overall health of their system, if they're having any issues, why they're having them, and recommend treatment if needed, all based on my observations. The webinar today will touch on what I look for during my analysis and some of the fundamentals of wastewater microbiology, such as flock health and sludge age, protozoa and metazoa, their connection, and what they mean for your plant. During this webinar, you will be provided links to Aquafix's F2M calculator, our microscopic analysis services, and our organism database, all of which can be accessed at any time for future use. To start, it's important to remember that wastewater treatment is a biological process composed of a plethora of different microorganisms. These organisms can be broken down into three different groups, bacteria, protozoa, and metazoa. The first group, bacteria, are the most abundant and will contribute to 95% of your total biomass. Bacteria are vital in the wastewater treatment process as they are primarily responsible for nutrient removal, BOD reduction, and can be indicators of treatment conditions. Bacteria can be further broken down into more specific categories, free bacteria, flocculated bacteria, and filamentous bacteria. These will be expanded on in a bit later. Our next group, protozoa, will make up about 4% of your total biomass. They're going to be responsible for consuming algae and bacteria, as well as aiding in effluent clarification. Protozoa are also going to be used as indicators toward the health of your treatment system. Our final group, metazoa, will make up about 1% of your total biomass. They're going to be in charge of protozoa and bacterial consumption, and also are indicators of treatment conditions. So as you can see, these three groups all play important roles in the foundation of wastewater treatment. Not only are they important in the treatment process, but these three groups also provide an indication towards the efficiency of your treatment process, overall biological health, and any potential issues occurring within your plant. Some of the issues that metazoa and protozoa can tell us is if there's any incoming toxicity, nutrient imbalances, septic conditions, bulking and foaming, as well as mechanical issues. This is why Aquafix uses microbiology as the primary tool in finding the most effective treatment solutions. We believe understanding the microbiology of a plant is fundamental in discerning what problems are present and why. One of our goals when analyzing samples is to determine the cause of any issues that may be occurring within your plant. This allows us to recommend treatment that not only alleviates symptoms, but also treats the root cause from those symptoms as well. For our analysis, we start by looking at flock, specifically flock structure, sludge age, oxygen penetration, and extracellular polymeric substance levels. We then move on and quantify and identify the metazoa and protozoa, as well as filamentous bacteria. Through these observations, we're then able to discern what may be happening in a plant, why it's happening, and provide educated treatment recommendations in turn. One of the main components we focus on when determining the overall health of a plant is the sludge age. And a sludge age is the amount of time solids are spent under aeration. Knowing the sludge age within your plant is important as many aspects of your plant's microbiology are a direct result of this sludge age. There are gonna be many things that help us determine the approximate sludge age within your plant, such as the bacterial population, metazoa and protozoa population, as well as the overall flock health. Throughout this presentation, I'll be referencing this diagram to help demonstrate their relations. It's important to keep in mind other factors such as environmental or mechanical issues can influence these characteristics. Therefore, when determining a plant's overall health, it's important to analyze more than the sludge age because alone, it may not be enough clear indication. Now let's start by getting a more detailed understanding of flock and what exactly we look for on our analysis. Flock formation occurs when free bacteria grow and develop while consuming nutrients. Then, under ideal conditions, 
bacteria will begin to produce and secrete flocculating agents, mainly extracellular polymeric substances or EPS. These flocculating agents then allow bacteria to stick together and form flock. The degree of flocculation can be connected to the sludge age. At a younger sludge age, high levels of free bacteria will be present. This will result in low settling and a cloudier effluent. This is because bacteria need adequate retention time in order for the flock formation process to occur. As the sludge age becomes older, we'll start to see flock form as free bacteria reduce nutrients, grow, and reduce flock leading agents. Bacteria are now able to begin settling and creating a less turbid effluent. Once we reach a healthier sludge age, ideal flock formation will occur, resulting in efficient settling and a clear effluent. Here's an example of what some healthy flocculated bacteria would look like. As you can see, the flock are variable shapes and sizes and minimal free bacteria is present. After looking at the size and shape of flock, we will further analyze how well oxygen is penetrating into flock as well as the strength of flock structures. We're able to analyze how well oxygen is penetrating flock by looking at their color using our phase contrast lens on our microscope. When flock are white or tan, like in the photo on the left, it's an indication that there are healthy levels of oxygen penetration occurring. However, if flock appear darker brown or black, like on the right, it's an indication of poor oxygen penetration, and therefore septic regions will start to appear within the flock structure. It's important to analyze oxygen penetration because if flock become oxygen deficient, it can limit their ability to uptake nutrients. The levels of oxygen penetration can also be used as indicators to determine if there are any other issues within a plant. For example, if we see small flock that aren't very condensed, they're expected to be white in exhibiting signs of good oxygen penetration. However, if these small, less dense flock are brown or black, they can be an indication that the DO levels are too low, which in turn is prohibiting sufficient oxygen penetration from occurring. Next, we'll analyze EPS levels to help determine the strength of flock. In order to do so, we use a black India ink stain. If there are higher levels of EPS present in flock, more of the India ink is going to be repelled. This is going to produce a brighter color flock under the microscope. If there are lower levels of EPS present, it'll be less bright. Moderate levels of EPS are going to be the most ideal for flock formation, as we'll start to see problems occurring if levels are too high such as sliming, or if they're too low, problems such as flock disintegration. Sludge age is not only associated with flock formation, but it's also associated with the F to M ratio of a wastewater treatment system. F to M is the ratio of incoming food or influent BOD in comparison to the total number of microorganisms within a treatment plant. So now that we have covered the basics of sludge age, flock formation, and F to M ratios, we will look at how they connect. Let's start at a young sludge age. At a younger sludge age, we're going to have a relatively low population of bacteria as the growth process is starting to occur. We're also going to see high F to M values as we have more proportional food coming into the system in comparison to overall bacteria. Once the sludge age reaches a relatively healthy age, flock structures will become more ideal and the F to M ratios will be healthy. Keep in mind, the ideal F to M ratios can vary in every plant, so finding the right ratio within your system will help lead to more efficient nutrient reduction as well as overall treatment. When the sludge age becomes older, this is when we'll start to see problems. If the sludge age is too old, bacteria are allowed to continue to grow, which further reduces available nutrients. With low F to M conditions now present, flock will start to starve. And instead of using the limited BOD available, flock will begin to consume the EPS. Since the EPS is holding the flock together, these decreasing levels are gonna result in the flock to start to disintegrate. This disintegration then can lead to issues such as high TSS and turbidity. Our overall analysis of flock includes flock size, shape, and structure, as well as oxygen penetration and EPS levels. Knowing this information helps us to determine the overall health of a plant. Another aspect we look at when analyzing samples 
is the type and abundance of filamentous bacteria present. Filamentous bacteria can be present in every wastewater plant at various levels. At manageable levels, filaments can provide structure and support for flock. So because of this, some levels of filaments are necessary and beneficial. However, when the environments present that favor filaments, these filaments are allowed to dominate the system and outcompete flocculated bacteria. When filaments are outcompeting flocculated bacteria, it can lead to issues such as bulking and foaming. Filaments tend to have distinct characteristics. Therefore, our identification is done largely through appearance. Begin by notating if the filaments are growing in the bulk liquid or growing within the flock. We also notate their abundance, cell shape and size, as well as if the filament is modal or not. We then utilize Gram and Nizer stains to definitively identify the filaments based on their unique staining properties. For example, in the photo on the right, you can see this filament stains Nizer negative. However, it does have Nizer positive granules. These are going to be characteristics that are consistent with the Nizer staining properties of Microthrix parvicella. The left photo shows a Gram positive filament with true branching. These are consistent with nocardia-like organisms. After filament and identification and estimation of abundance, we're then able to determine the environmental conditions present that are responsible for their growth. Using this information, we're then able to determine the solution to the problems that these filaments could be causing. Moving on to metazoa and protozoa. These organisms are more complex and much larger than bacteria, but they take up overall less biomass. They're not directly responsible for reducing BOD, but they still have many direct and indirect effects on the biology and health of wastewater. Protozoa primarily consume free bacteria, as well as bacteria located on the edge of flock. Through this process, the protozoa are able to help produce a clear effluent. The presence of protozoa within a plant can also be used as indicators for the sludge age and overall health. We'll start talking about the specific protozoa associated with a younger sludge age. Naked amoebas are a protozoa that produce waves of cytoplasmic movement as their gut contents flow. This is referred to as pseudopodia or false feet movement. They use their pseudopodia to surround and capture their food. Naked amoebas are most dominant in a younger sludge age due to the high concentration of free bacteria, which is their main food source. If you look at the graph in the upper right corner, we can see how their abundance is the most predominant during periods of high free bacteria. Under adverse conditions, naked amoebas have the ability to create a calcified shell or a test. Once this test is formed, the naked amoebas are now referred to as testate amoebas. Testate amoebas are very similar to naked amoebas, except their test helps to protect them in the presence of low dissolved oxygen or other adverse conditions like mild toxicity. Therefore, if testate amoebas are observed within your system, they can be an indication that adverse conditions are present. Flagellates, they have one or more long hair-like tail called a flagellum. These flagellum are used for movements and feeding on dispersed bacteria. Flagellates are unable to compete with bacterial growths, so they're going to be primarily found in systems with a high F to M and younger sludge age prior to the strong flop formation occurring, such as reflected in the graph. Flagellates can also be abundant in systems that have recently experienced a toxic upset. This is because toxic upsets are usually followed by the rapid growth of free bacteria, meaning an abundance of food for flagellates. Next, we have swimming ciliates. Swimming ciliates tend to be found within the young to moderate sludge age when free bacteria levels are decreasing. Swimming ciliates are beneficial to a wastewater system as they feed on free bacteria, which aids in a clear effluent. Now let's move on to protozoa that are more indicative of a healthier sludge age. Crawling ciliates are going to be indicators of an older and more sustainable sludge age as they primarily consume flock rather than free bacteria. They're going to be dominant when a flock formation is present, ammonia levels are low, and the pH is around neutral. Crawling ciliates have actually been referred to the cows of wastewater as they graze on loosely attached bacteria on the edges of flock. This grazing helps to maintain a more healthy and condensed flock structure. 
Next, we have stock ciliates. Stock ciliates are one of the most important protozoa in wastewater. This is because they use their cilia to create a water current which filters food particles such as free bacteria, algae, and other small protozoa into their mouth. This feeding is what aids in creating a clear effluent. If stock ciliates are observed in large colonies, like in the photo on the right, it can be an indication of an older sludge age. The larger the colony, the older the sludge age. However, as you can see on the diagram, small colonies or stock ciliates not found in colonies will start to appear in a relatively healthy range. Sometimes if stock ciliates are observed with a shell or lorica, such as in the left, they can be an indication that there's mild toxicity present in your system, kind of like the test that naked amoebas form. Some stock ciliates also have the ability to separate from their stock and swim freely in order to avoid unfavorable conditions. If succutorins are observed in your wastewater plant, they're going to be an indication of a healthy activated sludge system. If attached growths are developing on the stock of a succutorin, it can act as a gauge for the sludge age. Similar to stock ciliate colonies, the more attached growths on succutorins, the older the sludge age. As you can see in the photos, succutorins come in many shapes and sizes, but they all have tentacles. These tentacles are used to capture and consume metazoa or protozoa. However, if their tentacles are observed scrunched up, it's going to be an indication of high levels of ammonia. In comparison to protozoa, metazoa are going to be more complex, but they are still used as indicators for overall health. They're often associated with older sludge ages because they have a slower growth and development period. Let's start and look at some of the metazoa found in a healthier sludge age. Rotifers are a diverse type of metazoa that come in many shapes and sizes. Some rotifers have a funnel-like structure with cilia on the front of their body that resembles rapidly revolving wheels. This is going to be the rotifer in the center photo. Rotifers feed on dead and decomposing matter, as well as bacteria, algae, and smaller protozoa. This helps produce a clear effluent. All rotifers are going to have a mastoc, which is pointed to in the far right photo. And this mastoc helps in eating and digestion. In the left photo, we can see that this rotifer is probably pregnant because there are two mastocs. If live rotifers are observed in your plant, they're going to be indicative of a slightly older sludge age, as mentioned before. However, if dead rotifers are present, they're indicators of toxic conditions, as they are usually the first to be affected. Gastrotrix are also going to be indicative of a moderate to older sludge age. They're not common, so not a lot is known about them. But what we do know is we tend to see them a little bit more frequently in the autumn. However, we're not exactly sure why. Now let's go over the metazoa that are more associated with a higher sludge age. Nematodes are a cylindrical shaped metazoa that feed on bacteria, fungi, and other nematodes. If they're found in your wastewater plant, they're going to indicate that you have an old sludge age. They're also going to be more resilient to mild toxicity and low DO compared to other metazoa. However, their presence does not always indicate that those conditions are present. Next, we have tardigrades, or water bears, which are everyone's favorite, and they have a plump body with eight legs and four claws on the end. These claws are used to rip open their food, such as rotifers, small nematodes, protozoa, and sometimes even other tardigrades. If tardigrades are present within a system, they're going to be indicative of an extremely old, however, stable sludge age. Finally, we have bristle worms. Bristle worms are found in very old sludge ages and prefer high MLSS and low F to M conditions. Bristle worms can be large enough to be seen with the naked eye. They're typically ranged from 300 micrometers to one centimeter. Bristle worms have been known to reduce MLSS levels by consuming bacteria. Unfortunately, they have a tendency to consume the younger and healthier bacteria, which exacerbates the high sludge age related issues that may already be occurring within your plant. In our analysis, we identify and quantify the metazoa and protozoa present as they help us determine the sludge age and diagnose any environmental conditions that may be responsible for their growth. If you'd like to learn more about the metazoa and protozoa we've talked about today, you can access our easy to navigate database. 
When accessing our database, you will be led to a screen with thumbnails for each organism. For easier navigation, our database has been organized into specific groups, starting with filamentous bacteria. When you click on a thumbnail, it'll bring you to a page dedicated to that specific filament. In this case, type 0092. The page will consist of ways to identify the specific filament. There will be a section to show photos, what that filament will look like under different views or stains, as well as a section explaining why they could be present in your system. Scrolling further down the page, it's also going to include what the filaments could be doing to your plant. For example, type 0092 can cause bulking to occur. It's also going to cover potential treatment options, as well as just more overall details of the filament itself. The next section in our database is metazoa and protozoa. Our protozoa and metazoa pages will have the same content as our filaments. However, these pages can also contain videos. For example, the video on our stalk ciliate page shows how some stalk ciliates have the ability to contract their stalk in order to help them feed. Our microorganism database not only includes descriptions of protozoa, metazoa, and filamentous bacteria, but it also covers plant, algae, and some other organisms that tend to be found within wastewater. At Aquafix, we focus on treating the root cause of a problem, not just the symptoms. We perform comprehensive microscopic analysis using, but not limited to, our microscope with four different magnifications. We also use bright field, phase contrast, and dark field. We use glass slides and cover slips, as well as India ink stains, gram, and nizer stains. Using this equipment, we're able to analyze the bacteria, protozoa, metazoa, and sludge age within the plant. With these findings, we're then able to provide the most efficient treatment recommendations that are specifically tailored for your plant. If you would like to utilize our microscopic analysis and filament identification services, whether there be a problem occurring within your plant or you'd like to just establish a baseline, here's what you can expect. You will receive a cooler for return shipping that comes with four sterile sample bottles. There's going to be a bag for you to return them in, a liner for ice, and a form that should be filled out detailing these samples that are being sent in. It's important to send these samples overnight and on ice. Once our lab receives the samples, we will conduct detailed observations and generate a report based on our findings. This report will then be sent to you electronically as well as in the mail. After you're receiving your report, a call with the technical representative from your state can be set up to discuss the report and the treatment specifics, as well as addressing any potential questions you may have. Here's an example of what one of our reports could look like. We provide photos from each of the samples taken during our analysis, as well as captioning their significance. We cover the flock and flock structure, metazoa and protozoa, oxygen penetration, EPS levels, and any filamentous bacteria present. A summary is then provided detailing the conditions of your plant as well as addressing any concerns that may be present and why they're present. This summary is also going to provide a recap and more further in-depth interpretations to the captions above. Your approximate sludge age will be discussed in the summary as well, but it's also going to be displayed on a diagram like the one we've referenced today. If there are any filaments present in your system, a quick reference table will be provided showing their abundance as well as their cause, followed by a more detailed description of the filaments and what conditions are likely triggering their presence. Finally, our report will provide the treatment recommendations that are best suited for your plant. A few key points to take away from today's webinar is that wastewater treatment is a biological process. Every wastewater plant is different. Therefore, analyzing your plant-specific microbiology during an upset, but also when healthy, allows for a better understanding of your plant's performance. Not only knowing, but also understanding your plant's microbiology is important in accurately and optimally diagnosing, treating, and running your unique plant. Let's use microbiology to treat the root cause of your problems, not just the symptoms. Are there any questions? Thank you for joining me. So there's a question that says, 
Will you discuss sludge color, for example, healthy sludge versus old sludge color? So, for example, in an older sludge, usually at that point, they will be more condensed. So when flock are more condensed, they'll have a tan color to the inside or a brownish. This is going to be healthier levels for your old sludge. But then when flocks start to disintegrate, we will see those smaller flock that I kind of referenced earlier with a darker center. And this will help us point to there being an older sludge present. But it can vary based on many different observations. Is observing color in the aeration basin indicative of this as well? If this question is being referred to the color of your aeration basin, just with the naked eye, it's highly recommended against coming to any conclusions or diagnosis based on just the color itself. There can be many different conditions going on and that color could just be the same. So in order to determine the health, it's best for a micro to be sent in. So this sounds like they potentially could be crawling ciliates. However, I would need to see a photo to be able to accurately give an identification for this. It depends on how in-depth you want your analysis to go. We use a Nikon camera and a lot of plants just have bright field and that can be enough just to get a gist of the size of your flock. But we also do have a phase contrast lens that allows us to see more of the flock color, as I had kind of mentioned before. So it all depends on how detailed you want your analysis to be. But just a bright field microscope should help with the basics of that. We recommend doing frequent analysis just to kind of keep your understanding of your baseline. So I'd say maybe once a month or once every three months if if there's not an upset occurring. But if there is an upset occurring, you're going to want to get that sample in right away. This is going to depend on the type of ciliates you have. If you have stock ciliates that aren't in very big colonies, that's going to be good. But if you have a bunch of swimming ciliates, that may not be the best thing because that's going to indicate you probably have a lot of free bacteria present. And swimming ciliates by themselves, they don't have the ability to get rid of all that free bacteria. So it could result in a more turbid effluent. It all depends on the type of ciliates present. So this depends. There are many different things that can cause foaming. For example, the filamentous bacteria, Nicardia-like organisms, they tend to be one of the most frequently foam causers, and they'll be present in systems that have a lot of high incoming fats, oils, and grease, as well as an older sludge age. However, there can be foaming that occurs when there isn't filaments present. For example, if you have a lot of incoming surfactants, you could have a surfactant-based foam, or if you have a really old sludge age, when cells die, they do release surfactants, so that could be another cause of foaming. It all depends. This is one of the reasons why microscopic analysis is so important, because if it's filamentous bacteria, if it's not filamentous bacteria, the best way to treat it will vary on if it's filament, if it's not, and what they may be. So I would say more so if there's an increase in cleaning supplies coming down into your system due to a virus, it could mess with your biology in the sense of if strong disinfectants come in, it can kill off your bacteria. So we're, we're doing a little bit of studies with it right now, but the virus itself we haven't looked at more so the effects of if there are cleaning supplies coming in and just completely wiping out your system first off that's really cool that you have a lot of gastro tricks but we have not ran into any situations where they've been a problem because they're going to be present in that older age it's going to be important to judge other aspects and not just the presence of gastro tricks. So if your flock is also disintegrating and you're having high TSS and all of that, that's going to be an indication that you're going to need to 
waste more but if you have a pretty stable sludge age there's no issues really occurring everything's running optimally and you have a lot of gastro tricks that shouldn't be a problem if your plant is operating great and you don't see any other issues occurring the FTEM ratio should be fine for your specific plant. It, it does vary from plant to plant. Are there any other questions? So if you're wanting to do a comparison, so say you want to know what you're at an MLSS of 3000 and then you want to know if it's better at 2000, it probably would be best to sample from that same location if you're doing a comparison. However, it it, it's a good idea to kind of take from various locations or just get a composite as well, just so you know that it's the same throughout your entire basin and not just that one area. For example, there's something called Daphnia, and it's going to be a hit or miss if you collect them because they like to congregate in some areas. So it's beneficial to sample from different locations, but a composite is going to be your best bet. The database that had popped up, that is going to cover the bacteria that we have. Um, it's going to be something that will be ever expanding. However, it will probably be a slow process because it does take time to research these. But what we have on that database is our current picture dictionary, as you could say. Basically, just not from one specific spot. It's a combination throughout the entire basin. All right. Is that all the questions we have for today? Well, if any other questions come up, feel free to shoot us an email through our contact information on our website, and we will sure to get back to you. Thank you very much again for joining me. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.